Hey everybody again, this is uh, Mr. Beckstrom and uh, today we're going to be going over chapter 1, section 2. Uh, this is on special applications of ratio and proportion. If you take a look at the section in your book, uh, you'll see a lot of word problems uh, where they're talking about uh, ratios and proportions, direct proportions and inverse proportions. Um, so it's, it's really helpful if you go through those and wherever you see your turn, you try to do those yourself. I'll go over a couple of similar problems here, uh, but the book is definitely very helpful when it, when it comes to that. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we're doing. So the, the two kind of new terms that this section introduces is the direct proportion and the inverse proportion. So uh, a direct proportion is where when one quantity increases, it leads to a proportional increase in the other quantity. Uh, or as one quantity decreases, it, it leads to a proportional decrease in the other quantity. Uh, basically, as one goes up, the other goes up, or if one goes down, uh, the other goes down. Uh, there's lots of examples you could probably think of that are direct proportions. Uh, the more I eat, the more I weigh. That would kind of be a direct proportion. Uh, probably the more exercise I do, the, the less I weigh is probably going to be some kind of uh, inverse proportion. Um, so if... If they're both going up or they're both going down at the same time, that's going to be a direct proportion. And if one's going up while the other's going down, or if one's going down while the other's going up, then that's going to be your inverse propor uh, proportion. All right, so let's look at an example of a direct proportion here. Let's say that you built a model house to scale. And what to scale means is that the ratios of all the dimensions are going to be the same. Uh, so the ratio of the height of the model is gonna, to the actual height is going to be equal to the model's length to the actual length. Uh, and, and all the measurements involved are going to be uh, proportional as well. So... And, and that's a lot of times when architects, they'll, they'll set up some type of model building our house, something that they're doing. They'll often try to make that to scale. Um, so if we were to set up a proportion for a model house, or we were to build a model house, we would be measured that it has a height of three inches and a length of four inches. Uh, what would the actual height be if the actual length is 32 feet. So we, we kind of want to expand this thing. We kind of want to expand it from a length of four inches to a length of 32 feet. And then we want to see how tall this will be, you know, uh, because the, this model house is proportional to the actual house. All right, so go ahead and see if you can set that up and, and see what you get. All right, and so we, we have the Going back here, we have the actual height of the model height is equal to the actual length of the model length. So we just kind of plug those three figures in there. We have the three inches here, the four inches there, the 32 feet here. And this is what we're going to be solving for, the actual height, because that's our unknown here. Um, and we talked about this last section, uh, but uh, one requirement we need for a ratio is that it's in the same units. So you can notice here that these units are different. I have feet on top and I have inches on bottom. So I can really convert either way. I can either convert the feet to inches or the inches to feet. Uh, I find it's usually easier to convert the smaller quantity into, excuse me, convert the larger quantity into the smaller quantity because when you, when you do the smaller into the larger, you'll often get a decimal. And uh, it's just a little bit more cumbersome, uh, especially if you get like a repeating decimal or something. And, and uh, you won't get the exact answer. So in this case here, uh, we're going to convert 32 feet to inches. Uh, we're going to be talking more about unity fractions later in this chapter. But for now, this is a pretty easy conversion to do without a unity fraction. So uh, there's 12 inches and a foot, and there's 32 feet. So you just multiply those two together, you get 384 inches. Uh, 
Now we can put that where the 12, 32 feet was. Uh, we can do our cross multiplication that we learned in section 1 1. And we get uh, 4 times x is equal to 3 times 384, which is 1152. And then we can uh, solve that by dividing both sides by 4. We're going to get our, our unknown quantity, which is our actual height. It's going to be 288 inches, or we can convert that back to feet and say that's 24 feet. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the inverse proportion. Remember, we said that this is where, where one quantity increasing leads to a proportional uh, decrease in another quantity or vice versa. Or if one quantity is decreasing, that leads to a proportional increase in the other quantity. You can just kind of think about it in like uh, in two different arrows pointing in different directions. Uh, it's one gets larger, the other is getting smaller, and vice versa. All right, so let's look at an example here. Um, suppose that the number of teeth on a gear is inversely proportional to the speed with which it rotates. And this is often the case. Um, so in order to set up an inverse proportion, we're going to flip the, the second ratio. So instead of the speed of gear A over the spirit, speed of gear B equaling the teeth in gear A over the teeth in gear B, we're going to flip that second fraction. So the gear A's are going to be diagonal from each other, and the gear B's are going to be diagonal from each other. And this only happens when we're doing an inverse proportion. So the question is, if gear A turns at 60 revolutions per minute and has 30 teeth, what is the speed of gear B if it has 40 teeth? So go ahead and try to set this up and solve it. Uh, it's really helpful to think about what kind of number you're expecting before you do it. Uh, remember, since this is an inverse proportion, and we know that gear B has more teeth than gear A, then we should expect that the RPMs are going to be reduced by some amount. Because remember, as one goes up, the other goes down. So as the teeth go up, the RPMs are going to go down. So we should be expecting somewhere around 40 or 50 RPMs, uh, depending on uh, what the math tells us here. So we set that up. We put it in here, 60 RPMs over, we'll put an X for our unknown quantity. That's the speed of gear B is equal to, and remember, we flip that fraction. So the, the teeth on gear B is 40 teeth, and the teeth on gear A is 30 teeth. Cross multiply, that's uh, 40x is equal to 1800. Divide both sides by 40, and we're going to get 45 RPMs. And that's exactly where we thought we should be. It should be a little bit less than 60, somewhere between 40 and 50. And uh, that lets us know that we're in the right area. So that means that uh, the speed of gear B is 45 RPMs. All right, so make sure you check out the homework and you check out some exercises in the book. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to either call me or uh, send me an email. And my contact information is right at Moodle. Thank you and have a nice day.